You're watching live coverage of Phoenix Landing Day from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. With me right now is the project manager, Barry Goldstein. Welcome. Thank you. Good luck to you today. Yeah, it's been nerve-wracking. Well, tell me a little bit about what's going on. Uh, where, where have we been and where are we headed? <laughs> <laughs> well, we launched, uh, we launched on August 4th. Maybe we can roll the little video we have here. Let's go to the videotape of the... Uh, we launched the vehicle on August 4th of last year, and we've been traveling. Uh, go back to the video, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we've been traveling, and we're almost done with a $422 million cruise. Uh, That's a million dollars. I wish. Million, <laughs> million mile cruise uh -huh. uh, to Mars. And uh, right now we're about 170 million miles away from the planet, which is why things take about 15 minutes for us to detect that they happen. It takes the radio waves that long to travel this, this distance to Earth. It's taken us 10 months, and does it look like we're on target? We're not oh, very yeah. far away. We had a fun night last night. Uh, we've been uh, fine-tuning the trajectory ever since we launched, but as it turns out, the vehicle's been behaving so well that we skipped two of our maneuvers, the most recent one being the one we had planned for last night. Uh, it was nip and tuck there all the way, but we were watching it as it was making its way down into the planet, but uh, we've decided to forego that. We have an uh, image here, we can put this up. This is a picture of our landing site. That blue ellipse that you see there is actually 60 kilometers long and 20 kilometers wide. That's the target that we're headed for that we should be here and uh, detecting here in less than an hour. All right, so once we get there. Ah, yes, yeah. once we get the atmosphere. <laughs> but we have to get there first, and the key is what we keep talking about, that seven minutes of terror. Can you kind of walk us through that? Sure, I'll walk you through 14 minutes. <laughs> okay. uh, starting this morning, we were traveling at about 6,100 miles an hour relative to the Mars surface, and ever since we've hit what we call the Mars gravity well, Mars has been uh, pulling us in. We're now traveling at 12,700 miles an hour, 14 minutes from touchdown, we separate from the cruise stage, as you can see, and then we lose our X-band communication. Uh, at that point, you'll see, seven minutes before touchdown, we hit the Mars atmosphere and we start heating up. The heat shield reaches temperatures of 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we've had a lot of help from our friends and partners at Langley, uh, helping us with our aerodynamics in the stage. We spend four minutes of the seven minutes of terror you refer to going through that phase. We decelerate from, as I said, 12,700 uh, 12, miles an hour all the way down to 1,100 miles per hour. That's 99% of the energy and 90% of the velocity. We get through that phase, and now we're at, as I said, 1,100 miles per hour. And the next thing to happen is we use our onboard gyros to detect the right time to open our parachute, which you'll see in the video here right now. And when the parachute inflates, it puts a force of 10,000 pounds per square inch on that parachute, and that puts quite a tug on the vehicle itself. We'll spend the next three minutes using the Martian atmosphere to slow us down, uh, and then actually 15 seconds after it deploys, the heat shield goes away, but we'll spend three minutes on the parachute. As we're coming down, we're slowing down even more down to 120 miles per hour. You see the landing legs deploy. At about this time, our landing radar comes on to give us our first measured altitude above the surface. And when we detect we're approximately one kilometer off the surface, the real, off the surface, not the circus, the real fun, the real fun begins. That's when we will separate from our back shell. And half a second later, our thrusters come on. We have 12 descent engines that are pulsed to navigate ourselves down to the surface. You may see as this uh, animation shows us turn around, that's our last minute pirouette we do. We do that to try to align the lander such that when we open our solar rays, they're oriented east-west so we can maximize our solar exposure when we land and have uh, much more life on the surface. And then we touch down at five miles an hour. So those last 30 seconds actually take us from 120 miles an hour to five. And what you see there is the last step of the sequence, which is the venting of our helium tank, which we use to pressurize our, propell our propulsion system. And we do that because we don't want any of the remaining propellant to actually leak through the thrusters and go onto the surface. All right. Well, thank, thank you for taking us all through EDL. I hear on my headset that uh, they appear to be starting the readiness poll. So let's go back to mission control. We did have a glitch with DSS 15. Uh, but that appears to be being resolved, and so we expect to have them tracking again here in just a few moments when we do begin transmitting again. Uh, at this time again, just to repeat one more time, we are go for EDLCOM support. I copy that. Can you confirm that MCS is off at this point in time? That's correct. Nothing has changed in that, in that respect.
Copy that. Thank you very much. Odyssey Systems, EDLCOM on Phoenix Test. At this time, please verify Odyssey is go for EDLCOM support. Odyssey Systems, Odyssey is go for EDLCOM support. Copy that. Thank you.